Just like how Ultraman is a big deal in Japan, Saint Seiya is huge. The original series is consistently in top anime lists, its manga sold over 30 million copies, and Saint Seiya is said to be the main source of inspiration behind Bleach and Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. It spawned video games, a musical, and has multiple series tied to it. No wonder Netflix is rebooting this anime. But with all that content, where do you even begin? I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about all the different Saint Seiya installments. Before we jump in, I want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors on Patreon, especially our super nerd sponsor of the day, Ronnie M. Thanks to you Golden Knights, we get to read comics, binge Netflix, and do awesome live shows where we get to talk to you guys. If you want to pitch in, head on over to our Patreon page and see if a donation tier works for you. We'll thank you a shout out, swag, behind the scenes goodies, and more. If you can't spare any dollars, no worries. Liking, sharing, and subscribing are awesome ways to show us your support. Let's get to the Knights! A new generation of knights control the fate of the world. First of all, why is this the biggest anime you've never heard of? Well, when the original series came to the US in 2003 via Cartoon Network, like many anime, it was heavily edited to be more kid-friendly, meaning it cut out the violence, recolored blood blue, reworked the scripts, and only aired 30 some odd episodes. And while this stood out against other anime, what with its bright pops of color, as opposed to the pastels most anime lean towards, it had no chance. It was brought to the US in the early aughts, almost 20 years after it was made. Plus all those reworks, no one was gonna watch this. <laughs> now if you're new to the franchise, it can be really hard to jump in. So what we're gonna do is take a quick look at each of the shows and arcs in order of release date. I'm mostly trying to not bog you guys down with any potential spoilers and give you a linear timeline to work with. Let's kick things off with the original Saint Seiya. <laughs> Saint Seiya began as a manga and followed the story of five mystical warriors known as saints. The saints are the 88 warriors who serve the goddess Athena. There are three tiers of saints, bronze, silver, and gold. The saints have sworn to defend the reincarnation of the Greek goddess Athena as she fights other Olympian deities who wish to rule the earth. The manga has three main acts, Sanctuary Act, Poseidon Act, and the Hades Act, totaling up to 28 volumes. The manga was adapted for television and ran from 1986 to 1989, airing 114 episodes. Similar to the manga, the anime has three parts, Sanctuary, with 73 episodes, Asgard, which has 25 episodes and is completely original content, and finally Poseidon, which covers the final 14 episodes. The anime was canceled in 1989, leaving the story unfinished. The manga's final arc would be adapted into a series of OVAs in 2002. The main storyline of the series, Sanctuary, follows the saints on a quest to save Athena. The gist of the story is that kids trained to become saints, warriors, earn their cloths, armor, and use their cosmos, or powers. The story is set in a world that feels a lot like our present, only here, Greek mythology is real and relevant. This is where I'd love to bring up, why does Greece look like the moon? Everything looks like they're on the moon. It's bizarre. The first big story arc is the Galaxian Wars. This is a sort of gladiatorial tournament that determines who'll win the gold cloth, the most powerful cloth a saint can have. These play out like WWE episodes and allow us to meet our main cast of characters. Once we know who is who, our heroes embark on a quest to retrieve the gold cloth which has been stolen by Black Saints. Black Saints are basically evil versions of the Saints who look exactly like them and have the same cloths, but in black. They're led by evil Bronze Knight Phoenix Iki, who desires the gold cloth for himself. The next arc focuses on the Pope. Pope Ares is the leader of the sanctuary. He's a bad dude who's wanted the gold cloth the entire time, and he's responsible for our last big storyline. This Pope Ares' Minions arc is mostly anime exclusive and features our heroes battling various saints sent by the Pope to extract the gold cloth. After taking a few L's, the Pope catches on that these bronze saints are more powerful than he anticipated. So he starts sending silver saints after them, a saint class above them. When they spank the silver saints, you guessed it, gold saints come into the picture. We learned that not only are there saints for different constellations, but also for each of the 12 Zodiac. Those Zodiac warriors are gold saints. These are your top tier, fast and powerful fighters. Where the series really takes off is once we start going through the 12 temples of the gold saints. It's amazing and it's so dramatic, like soap opera dramatic. I don't recommend just skipping to the Zodiac temples though. Enjoy the journey, you're gonna get a bigger payoff. 
Now, like the manga, we move into the Poseidon Act. Only in the anime, it's Poseidon plus the Asgardians. This second part of the anime is almost all original content that involves the inclusion of Nordic mythology. Then it goes back to Fong the manga and deals with Big Bad Poseidon trying to flood the Earth. So with the conclusion of the OG anime, let's move along to the films and ovas. The first movie, Evil Goddess Eris, was released in 1987 while the series was still running. This film deals with a goddess who wants to reincarnate, and that can't happen, man! This takes place during the Silver Saints arc, and thus deals largely with the Silver Saints. 1988's film The Heated Battle of the Gods is what inspired the Asgard filler arc. Since it was successful, the powers that were decided to adapt that film into the main anime storyline. But it definitely diverges from the film. The Asgardian Knights are far more developed in the series, but that makes sense. This movie is basically just two episodes. Another 1988 release, Legend of Crimson Youth, is an actual full-length feature with a significantly higher budget than the previous movies. A full-powered god is the big bad here, which really raises the stakes. The final film of the classic era was 1989's Warriors of the Final Holy Battle. While the Hades arc was canceled for the anime, this film had the saints up against a similar foe, Lucifer. So Judeo Satan versus Greek Mythos, woo! Lucifer commands three of the gods the saints had previously fought, Eris, Abel, and Poseidon. While many weren't thrilled with this as the final installment of the series, it did serve as an additional ending until the show's revival. The final manga saga, Hades, was adapted for screen starting in 2002, which led to the revival of Saint Seiya. The first 13 episodes focus on a new threat taking place post-Poseidon saga, and deals more with the gold saints than the five bronze saints we've been following. This takes us to the Heaven's Overture. Released in 2004, this full-length film unfortunately was a flop since it not only was different from the typical Saint Seiya material, but also confused fans since it was released during the Hades Sanctuary arc, but took place after it. In the Hades chapter Inferno 1 and 2, our bronze heroes are the focus again, as they square off against Hades who is threatening to end humanity. The third and final chapter of the Hades saga, Elysium, comes in at only six episodes. Much like other six episode finales, the storyline is rushed in this Gods and Holy War storyline. In 2009, we get a new series, Saint Seiya, The Lost Canvas. Now here's where a lot of people defer on viewing order. Some fans think Lost Canvas is a great place to jump in. Why? Well, we're dealing with an earlier timeline. This story takes place in the 18th century. Different characters, same souls. The two seasons are based on the Lost Canvas manga and retell the previous wars against Hades as told in the Hades saga. Seiya purists may be turned off by this one just because it's a totally different animation style. No right or wrong way to watch these, y'all, but let me know if this is where you'd start. Are you a release date viewer or a chronological story viewer? Next, we come to 2012 Saint Seiya Omega, which brought a new generation of saints to a post-Hades world and ignored that Heaven's Overture movie. Not only do we see how this new generation takes on their mantles, we learn what happened to former saints. The first season is more magical, while the second season sticks closer to its roots. Omega clocks in at 97 episodes. In 2014, Saint Seiya Legend of Sanctuary was released. This CG film is set in the present and focuses on Sayori Kido learning her destiny with the aid of bronze Saint Seiya, who must protect Sayori at all cost. While this isn't a carbon copy of the manga, I think overall this is a good film and worth watching, especially if you have a limited time to digest all things Seiya before the new Netflix series. It summarizes the first story arc well, and the animation is really pretty. Reminds me of Final Fantasy, I like it. Next up, we have 2015's 13 episode OVA, Saint Seiya, Soul of Gold. Was this created mostly to sell action figures? Absolutely. We learn what happens to the Gold Saints during the Hades saga when they disappear. This is definitely a filler chunk. Saint Seiya Santina Show, based on the manga of the same name, tells the story of a female Pegasus Saint. They are called the Knights of the Zodiac. Together, we can do anything. So with all the other versions behind us, let's focus on the new Netflix series. It's been confirmed that we can count on the tried and true storyline. Orphan Seiya goes to Greece, becomes one of Goddess Athena's 88 warriors, then sets off searching for his missing sister. The show is done with CG rather than traditional animation and will clock in at 12, 25 or so minute episodes. In addition to the animation style, we know the show is making other changes as well, such as gender swapping Bronze Knight Andromeda Shun. Shun was always a fan favorite, so we'll see how new audiences and old fans alike react to this change. If you're familiar with any and all of the franchise, be sure to message me on how you think the new series stacks up against previous installments. Naturally, with a show that's been around as long as Saint Seiya, there's a lot to cover. So hit me up with your Knights of the Zodiac know-how in the comments below. 
Also, guys, we're definitely going to be talking about this one on our live show, Nerd Flix and Chill. So be sure you tune in on Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. For more videos, click to the left of my face, or you can check us out on Roku or Plex. Another big thanks to our Patreons, especially you, Ronnie. And thank you for watching. See you, Space Cowboy.